Hi, and welcome to part five of my PowerShell tutorial series. In the last video, we went over some uh, data structures, including hash tables and custom objects. And before that, we looked at some arrays and some array lists and variables um, and just some simple commandlets on, in PowerShell. Today, we're going to be combining um, some of those. Uh, so we're going to be taking a look at commandlets, how to use commandlets with variables, not only storing the output of the command line to a variable, but actually using a variable as a parameter. And then we are also going to be looking at the pipeline. What that is, is we can actually take one commandlet and take it out, take its output and put it towards another commandlet. So what that kind of means is, let's say we use the get service commandlet, we can get a specific service that we want to either stop or start. We can get it and then we can do what's called pipe it to start service if we want to start it or pipe it to stop service if we want to stop it. Or we can even have an array of services that we pipe to get services and it'll get those specific services and then we can send them to the start or stop services. We're going to be going through all those examples today. Um, so let's go ahead and let's get started. Uh, so as always, I'm running my PowerShell ISC in administrator mode, and I have my first line as set strict mode latest. Let's go ahead and let's run that real quick here. And the first thing we're gonna do, just to get everyone um, back familiar with them, is the commandlet get service. So let's go and let's enter that here. And that simply gets me all the services that are running running or not running on my computer basically any services that are installed on the computer it'll tell me whether it's stopped whether it's running the name of the service and the what i would want to call the friendly name i think it's display name um, so it's more user friendly to read some of these codes are not user friendly at all so let's go ahead and let's get the print spooler service. Uh, so to get that without using anything different than what we saw so far, it would be get service name, and then the, the spooler service name is just spooler. So if we do this, we get our output of spooler. We see that it is the print spooler, and we see currently it is running. So Let's see how we can make this a little bit more interactive maybe, or a little bit more flexible, I should say. Let's create a variable called service name, and let's put spooler in the string here. And then let's do a get service, and we're gonna pass in the name, and we are gonna pass in our service name variable here. So I use the tab autocomplete there as always just to make my coding a bit faster. Let's run these two lines and here we can see we get the same output. So we've replaced writing spooler directly into getting a variable. Now you might wonder, technically this is more code, but at the end of the day, I, if my script was getting a user input of asking what service the user wants to get and stop or start, I could just do a read host commandlet and let the user input it and then just put it right into my get service. Or I can have an array of different services. Or if this service ever changes name and I reference this service often, I can only change it once and I don't have to change it in all the following places. So what we see here, we haven't used the pipe command yet. So let's go ahead and let's see our first example of that. So here, if we do the pipe to stop service. So actually before I run this, let me just show you what happens if I run a stop service on name and let's run it on our service name. So let's run this here and then let's run our get service. So we see that it is stopped and it was running before. So the stop service command has worked. 
So let's go ahead and let's start the service back up this time. So let's do a get service and we're going to pass in the name and we're going to pass in our service name. And then we're going to pipe it to start service. And we're not going to write anything else. We're not going to put the name in there. We are simply doing a get service with the service name, which will get us that exact, this output here. And then we're going to pass that to start service. Now what that's going to do, it's going to take our output from this get service and run the start service commandlet on anything that's passed. So it's automatically going to pass the name and the display name to the start service commandlet and the start service commandlet will actually execute its command. So let's actually go ahead and let's give this a shot here. And now if we do the get service, actually let's just run it here. We can see that it is running again. So that has worked. But now, so we've used one pipe. Now let's see what else we can actually end up piping. So what you might be wondering is, well, what if I have two services? What if I have three services? Well, we can actually create an array and we can actually pipe the array to the get service commandlet and then to the start service commandlet. So let's actually get a few other services here that we can use. Um, there's a few that come to the top of my head that you know won't break. Um, while I am filming this. So we got the sprint, uh, the print spooler. Uh, and let's do, um, I believe it's W32 time. I believe. Yes, I believe it is. Yes, W32 time, Windows time. Ours is actually stopped currently. So let's do that. So let's do services. And we are going to make that, let's actually make that an array list because we know in our previous videos that the array lists have a much better performance. In this case, it won't really matter. But you never know. Maybe eventually I'm going to use the script and store. 50,000 services if my computer ever managed to get to 50,000 services. And uh, let's put in the services that we want to control. So we're going to put spooler and we're going to put W32 time here. So we run this and then if I output the array list and we see we have both services here. So let's go ahead and let's actually pipe that to get service. Now what this is going to do is it's going to pass those two strings into the get service commandlet and it actually gets our two services. So it gets the spooler service and the w32 time service. And then what we can do is we can actually pass this again to start service. So now, now we see that our W32 time is uh, stopped and our spooler is running. So let's start both services. And then let's just copy this over. And let's see what those two services are doing right now. And we see that they're both running. So that's great. And we can actually do the same thing again. We can do stop service. And we are going to see that they are both stopped now. Uh, let me just uh, restart my spooler here. Perfect. So what we can see here is we can use this pipeline to do quite a lot of powerful things instead of having three lines, uh, we can just keep piping along. And this will come in handy later on uh, when we're writing uh, some code and we want to take an, an output from a command and pass it right into another one. We don't necessarily want to store it to a variable and then 
use that variable and then go through a loop to loop through that variable to execute another command. That'll just remove a lot of efficiencies and add a lot of lines in the code that we probably don't need. Uh, so we're going to keep our code really clean with this pipeline and be able to do a lot more. Now, what we can do, especially with the get service and our custom objects, we know that we can do um, get help for the command of get service. And then if we do a get help, and let's just do the parameter of full. So we get the full help menu here. Let me just make this a little bit bigger for you guys. So we see here that the parameters are computer name, display name, and there's also dependent services. Uh, but really the ones that I'm looking at are computer name, display name potentially, and name. Now, all of these are pretty easy to get, um, especially if you know what your computer name is. I got my computer name right before doing this video. But if you ever know your computer name, there's a e very easy way. If you do the dollar sign E N V colon computer name and then run that, it'll actually get your computer name so you can get that to run these commands that we're about to do. What you can do is you can actually create an object. Let's call ours service obj. And we're gonna create a new object. We're going to do a type PS custom object. And let's go ahead and let's let's add two properties here. So we're going to create a property just like what we did in um, our last video with the hash tables and custom objects. We're just going to be creating a custom object. And we're going to be creating a, a property called name. And we're going to be storing the value of spooler. And then we are going to be adding another one. And we are going to put this one as computer name. Because we know that these are two values that get service actually takes in. And we are going to go ahead and we are going to put my computer name in here. Now, if you were in a enterprise environment um, or any other kind of environment that has multiple computers, which we'll be showing you later on in my videos uh, when I bring up some virtual machines, that we could actually get the services that are running on another computer. And that'll actually be very useful for troubleshooting issues. Instead of logging onto the server and checking the services, you can simply get service, type in the computer name, and put in the server name. So let's create this object here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that object and pipe it to get service. And that will give us the print spooler on the computer desktop NK140EF, which is my computer. So it doesn't really show that much of a difference here. Um, but we can see that the spooler is running and it is the sprint spooler. Now that's it for the pipeline. Uh, you'll be able to pipe outputs into other commandlets at a lot of different places in the next couple videos. Uh, so in the next video, we're going to be going over loops and conditional statements. We're going to be looking at one of them. Um, I'd like to start with the if statements on the next video. And then a couple of videos after that, we'll be working on the different type of loops you can have in PowerShell. So I'll see you on the next video.